Hello, I am Dr. Quan Ben Liu, the Artistic Director of Channel Islands Choral Association and Faculty of the Performing Arts Program at the California State University Channel Islands. And I'm Dean Butler, President of Channel Islands Choral Association. Welcome to Into the Light, celebrating women composers in choral music. We are here at the beautiful Smith Pavilion of the Museum of Ventura County in Ventura, California. We thank the museum for partnering with us in this very special event. The choral pieces you are about here in this program are inspirational and uplifting. They bring joy and provide comfort to those who sing and hear them. During the COVID-19 pandemic, our choirs have been unable to meet in live in-person rehearsals. However, through the magic of this virtual technology, we can come together in new and innovative ways. A virtual choir keeps choral singing alive in a safe way and provides a sense of community for all of our members. Our virtual choir consists of the California State University Channel Islands University Chorus and the Pleasant Valley School District Chorus. Over the centuries, women composers continue to be largely excluded in concert programming. I look forward to showcasing compositions by women composers and composers from underrepresented racial, ethnic, and cultural backgrounds. Today's program highlights choral compositions of contemporary women composers. I would like to share with you some of their views and experiences of being women composers in today's world. I've been lucky in that I haven't experienced the kind of overt sexism that the generations before me have. So many of the female composers who are now in their 50s, 60s, 70s, or 80s uh, did experience the kind of like the blatant being told you can't be a composer, you can't have kids and be a composer. And I've been lucky that I have not experienced that. But I will say, I, I do think um, there are some conductors especially who maybe are, are blind to the fact that they're only choosing repertoire still by male composers. Um, and they're not conscious of that fact. And I think if you're not conscious of that, and I should say the same goes for if you're programming composers who are only white, um, if you're not aware of the fact that you're doing that, then you might not be, you, you can't, how can you change that if you don't even notice? Um, I think for conductors, like I was saying, the way to change that is to consciously take a look at what you're programming and maybe ask if, if there are other ways to go about finding music. I don't think when we have this conversation, some people think it, it becomes a matter of quality, like, oh, we just want to program the highest quality music, right? But if you're only looking at the music of white male composers, like if, if women aren't even on your register or people of color aren't on your radar at all. How are you going to program that music if you haven't even heard it? I think it does require a really conscious effort mm -hmm. on the part of conductors and people programming music of any kind to seek out the music being written by, by women, um, by people of color and see what's out there and decide for yourself what, what you really love and what you might, uh, what you might program and champion from that really diverse catalog. I will say that in the early part of my career, I really didn't feel this, but it was, I was teaching junior high choir and that was a very okay thing for a woman to do. It wasn't until I, I started into my PhD program, well, maybe in my master's a little bit, but I didn't have the wherewithal in my master's to really recognize it as such. And then in my PhD program, I really started to see that like, you would be totally right to call it out mm -hmm. and you can, but you can also just put your head down and do the work and get your revenge in excellence. There's a societal expectation that says, if you're a woman, you need to be nurturing and you need to be caring and you need to be polite and smile and be deferential. And also if you're a professional, if you're an academic, if you're a leader, then the expectation is that you're decisive, that you have 
strong opinions, that you're unafraid to lead, that you're assertive. And those things are going to be in conflict with this idea. So, so you have to dance this nice edge in academia or in politics or in anything that you see, like where women have to be in leadership and then they also have to be women. Uh, according to societal expectations, there's this um, tension. Mm -hmm. And so you, you sort of decide like, am I going to dance this in a, um, a savvy way? Am I going to just say, no, I'm, I'm moving forward with this and people can get out of the way? Thank you, Dr. Ramsey, for those powerful words and for your wisdom. Dr. Andrea Ramsey enjoys an international presence as a composer, conductor, scholar, and music educator. As an award-winning composer with approximately 100 works to date, Dr. Ramsey believes strongly in the creation of new music. Through the Dark is the first piece on today's program and one of my favorites. The rich text is adapted from the writings of a famous American, Helen Keller. And much like the strength and determination depicted of this woman by this artist, so was the strength and determination of Helen Keller. Totally blind and deaf, Helen Keller was sensory deprived, but managed to live a life full of imagery. Through the Dark is, um, that piece is really special to me. It was, I, I wrote that as a young teacher. So I was maybe in my third or fourth year of teaching and my mentor who was teaching at the university that I went to for undergrad, um, both of his parents passed away within a year's time um, of each other. And, and, and I, I told him, I said, I wanna write something that, to honor your, the memory of your parents. And I said, are there any texts that are really special to you? And he, he sent me off with his copy of, of uh, The Open Door by Helen Keller. It was just a bunch of her different writings. And so I was reading through those and I ended up pulling you know, several segments from that. And I just think the text is so stunning, especially given, um, given her physical challenges, the fact that she had such rich imagery um, and, and it's, it's a really powerful uh, text to look at. But when I said it, I mean, there's that whole, you know, music that beats with the pulses of God, music that beats with the pulse, that whole section. And I wanted it to be asymmetrical. I wanted it to be sort of erratic, like this uncontainable idea of like, what would the pulse of God be? Like, would it, it feels like it should be harder for us to grasp than just 4-4. Four, four. And, um, and so I was, I was really deliberate in that decision. And the first publisher that I submitted it to wanted to square it off, wanted to make that section six, eight. Mm. And, and uh, I, I was like, no, and I argued and they argued. And finally I just, and I'd never done this before, but I said, no, I'm not comfortable with this. Cause I'm usually open to, to small edits that make sense, but this was really big and this is a big chunk. So I, I took that leap and said, no, when I hadn't, had very many pieces published at this point and wasn't sure it would find a home. And thankfully there was another publisher who was willing to, um, to take the leap with me.
What a stunning piece of music. Elizabeth Alexander is a prolific American composer. Her works have been performed by thousands of choirs around the world. Her musical influences include spirituals, jazz, and blues from the American South, and Celtic American folk music of Northern Appalachia, which can be heard in her most performed octavos, such as this next piece, Faith is the Bird That Feels the Light. That feels the light and sings when the dawn is still dark. Oh, faith is the bird that feels the light, the bird that feels the light, the bird that feels the light. Oh, faith is the bird that feels the light and sings when the dawn is still dark. Hallelujah for the Day, composed by Dr. Ramsey for Men's Chorus, is a traditional African Ghanaian fisherman's prayer. In this soulful piece, you will feel the joyful celebration of life's abundance. Hallelujah for the Day was a uh, commission that was this uh, high school choir, and they want, but they wanted to perform combined with their middle school choir. I had a book of um, of different um, different prayers from the continent of Africa, and and Hallelujah from the day was was one of those that sort of grabbed me in this idea, uh, but it, it sort of leapt out that first Hallelujah for the day. that first little melody um, when I when I saw it on the page, I was like, oh, this is it. Hallelujah for the day and blessing for the night. Hallelujah for the day and blessing for the night. Elements are filled, we have drawn them in, we have sung your praise. We have drawn them in, we have, we have sung your praise. The nets are filled, we have drawn them in, we have sung your praise. The nets are filled, we have drawn them in, we have sung your praise. What a blessing is to see with fish in play. Oh, Lord. 
the day and bless him for the night. Lord, with your praise, we drop off to sleep. Carry us through the night. Make us fresh for the morning, O oh Lord our God. Hallelujah for the day. What a fun and uplifting piece of music sung by the men's chorus. Next, a chamber group of my CI students will present Over Hill, Over Dell. This is a charming characterization of the fairy's monologue from A Midsummer Night's Dream. That was a really interesting project because um, at that point in my career, I wrote that when I was at the University of Colorado, so that wasn't too terribly long ago. But um, I was mostly only, I'm mostly only writing on commission now, so people will come to me and say, but this was, Bob Chilcott came to me and said, we have, um, I'm putting together a collection of travel pieces on Shakespearean texts. I would love for you to write one for this collection for Oxford. And I didn't have anything published with Oxford. And I thought, you know, this is a really distinguished publishing house and this could be really neat to have something in. And Bob was a friend and somebody I just really admire. And, um, and, the, and I thought, well, let's see what the text is because that's always my big thing is that I want to relate to the text. Mm -hmm. And when I, when I looked, I was like, okay, I, I can do this. Like, you know, I can, I can set this, this, because not, I mean, there are some Shakespearean texts that maybe wouldn't have resonated the same, but this one was like rich and it dances and you just go, okay, yeah. So, um, so I thought, okay, we'll do this.
Sarah Cortell is a Canadian composer known for her fresh and exciting approach to choral music. Your Own Carol is a traditional Canadian carol with a text by a 17th century French missionary who worked primarily with the Huron people. My name is Vincent Dominguez, and I'm the Pleasant Valley School District Chorus Director. Hi, I'm Emma Zandrigan. I'm the co-director of the PBSD Chorus. And today, Emma and I are here to present to you a song called Like the Snowflakes, prepared by the children in our PBSD Chorus, written by Betty Nicholson. Betty is an accomplished flautist and accompanist pianist in our local Ventura County area. She has been a, our PBSD accompanist for several years and is currently a singer in the CSU Channel Islands University Chorus. Betty has helped out with various special events through playing flute or playing piano, accompanying the choir throughout the years. In 2015, Betty composed this piece that you're about to hear, Like the Snowflakes, in dedication to the Pleasant Valley School District Chorus, their director at the time, and the children that were participating at that time. Like the Snowflakes is a beautiful and uplifting piece that has a great message for the kids to sing. 
The lyrics tell us that just like snowflakes, no two people are exactly the same, and it encourages us to celebrate the uniqueness of every person by creating an inclusive and loving community. We hope you enjoy the chorus's performance. e-bells will conclude today's program. I invite you to listen to the splendid harmony in the chorus and the exuberant piano part that mimics the powerful resonance of the harps and the bells. Do you play the harp or bells yourself? I wondered about the piano accompaniment for Ring Out e-bells, which is much like a harp or bells and reinforces the lyrics that mention these two instruments. So I, I don't play either, but um, I really like that whoever asked the question picked up on that because I certainly was trying to bring that out in the piano accompaniment. So thank you for, for identifying that correctly. Um, I'm a pianist and a singer, although I'm not singing, well, I'm not singing with a chorus now, but it's been a couple of years since I've been in a chorus. Um, but that's, that's what I grew up doing. I played a little violin in middle school from like fourth to eighth grade. Um, but a composer's job is to, even if we don't know how to play every instrument, it's to at least have, at least have a, a rough understanding of how all of those instruments function. And so I would, I would hope that I'm a successful composer for harp or for bells. Uh, and 
obviously you, you really hope for piano because that's the one I know the best. What was it about Don Barr's lyric that drew you to them to set your composition? I just thought it was so, it's so festive, the, the text, but it's also really, um, there's a lot of, it's like contemplative as well, right? It, it's joyful. Um, the first three stanzas, we get, we get commands to do things, right? We're ringing out, the bells are ringing out, um, we're singing and we're coming to come at his call, right? We, we get these command words and then we get this introspection of the darkness breaking and there's this beautiful imagery. And I think, um, I think my favorite line in the whole piece and in the poem, um, and those things are, are very closely linked, but, um, the rocks and stones in holy tones are singing sweeter than the thrushes uh, is just it's it's beautiful it's just beautiful the language is beautiful and the imagery is beautiful and then we still get that really festive um, like festive joyous nature here
No, be not still, but with a will, strike all your hearts and set them ringing. What wonderful, uplifting words. They are such a fitting way to end our program. The talent and vision of the women composers that we have highlighted have given us a rare opportunity to come together virtually in glorious harmony. I would like to thank the singers of our virtual choirs, the CSU Channel Islands University Chorus and Pleasant Valley School District Chorus. Please give them an enthusiastic round of applause from wherever you are. We have been so privileged to share this program with you. I hope the inspirational music that you have heard by women composers will inspire you to let every breath throw all of its power into singing and into the light. Bring out to the nature's soul.